Well, as you just heard in the Tonight, uh, Obama said, elections rigged? What could that possibly mean? That's a Donald Trump conspiracy theory. Federal government doesn't run the elections. They're run by the states. Not if they have their way. Today, Homeland Security says they're going to take charge of elections. We're going to talk about that. But before we do, I want to talk about what happened in Brazil. Because what it does is it sets up, essentially, I think, a harbinger for what may happen this year in our presidential elections. A lot of people believe that the Brazilian elections were rigged back in 2014. There's a lot more going on in Brazil than just a messed up Olympics. Today, they ousted their Brazilian president, uh, Dilma Rousseff, in an impeachment vote. They needed a two-thirds majority to get her out. They got more than the 67% they needed. They got 75% of the senators voted her out. Now, she is a hardcore leftist. And as the hardcore left Washington Post reported this, they say that she was elected to her second term in 2014, but her ratings tumbled amid a severe economic recession, a multi-billion dollar corruption scandal at the state-controlled oil company Petrobras that tarred much of Brazil's political class. Well, the actual fact is that did not happen after the election in 2014. That happened prior to the election of 2014. Many people pointed it out at the time and pointed out that they believed that the election was rigged. Let's go back in time two years ago. And even prior to the November election, this was originally written by Henry Macau, picked up by a number of outlets. He pointed out that she had bankrupted the country. This is before the re-election. She had bankrupted the country. She had brought growth to a standstill. Inflation had come back to 6.5% and basically pointed out that she was a Marxist from the Workers' Party, and she was booed by 60,000 fans at the last World Cup games. This was before the election. Showed her quite a bit behind in the polls, and yet what happened was electronic voting machines run by a company out of Venezuela, Smartmatic, which was created to keep President Hugo Chavez of Venezuela in office. And he goes on to point out, refer to the very same things that the Washington Post implied happened after the election, implied that was reason for impeachment. No, these were things that had happened before she got elected. A scandal that broke a week ahead of the voting. The financial associate of her party, a front man responsible for sending money to offshore secret accounts for paying bribes in the name of the party, revealed to the police that her party was ransacking Petrobras, the largest Brazilian company, half-owned but totally controlled by the government, to the amount of 3% of every purchase. Part of the money would go to funding campaigns, some of it would go to the pocket of party members, the rest to bribe congressmen from other parties to vote for whatever Dilma wanted at the amount of 60,000 US dollars each month. The whole amount came to $10 billion, nearly bankrupted this country. Now, that was what was happening. Doesn't that sound like the Clintons? Massive pay for play? Scandals within the party breaking just as the election is going. And of course, as we now see, control of the election. Look at, and they call this a possible coup. They say, look at the three steps in which this happened and ask yourself if this isn't happening in America today. First of all, an obscure and mediocre lawyer whose only claim to fame was to have been in service for that political party is taken to be the president of the Supreme Voting Court. In other words, what Jay Johnson, head of Homeland Security, just said today, we're going to take charge of the elections, okay? So first of all, you get your guy in as the one who counts the votes. As Stalin said, it doesn't matter who votes. It, the only person who counts is the one who counts the votes, okay? Number two, use electronic voting machines. Again, Smartmatic, the company chosen in order to take care of the electronic system and the voting machines in the country created in Venezuela, created by Chavez cronies, so they could rig the election there. Rigging elections throughout Central and South America, rigging elections in the Philippines, in some cases, losing 25% of the votes that have been cast with no ability to audit these votes. They just disappeared, and you take their word for it, how this is voted. You can't, you can't control election if 25% of these, uh, the votes are just put out there by the uh, voting company without any auditing trail, okay? Number three, on the evening of the election, most of the country finishes voting about five o'clock, but in a critical key state, a battleground state, they delay the voting. How many times have we seen this in American elections? Finally, the main election poll company that receives millions of dollars in contracts with the government and is known to favor the party in every poll decides not to conduct exit polling. Okay, not conduct exit polling because 
And again, in America, we have one company that does all the exit polling for the press pool, one company, and they only report cross-tab demographics. They never use the exit polling to validate the actual results in the election. So here we are today, going down that same path, an amazing parallel between this Marxist female who took over the government in Brazil and our Marxist candidate that we got right now, and they're pushing to have now the federal government be the election monitor. Okay, this is what uh, he says he's going to do. But let's let's take a look now at the Clintons. It goes from Brazil to Donna Brazil, the person who has been a longtime crony capitalist friend of the Clintons. And she came out and said uh, a couple of days ago, she said, I don't know what the smoke is. Remember, Hillary Clinton took that metaphor, wherever there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah, we all know that's the truth. But she inverted that metaphor. She said, uh, there's a lot of smoke, but there's no fire. <laughs> Common sense tells you that there is a fire. Common sense tells you that there is massive corruption with this woman who structured everything to hide what she was doing. But Donna Brazil wanted to uh, not talk about that. I want to go to a clip that was put out this last weekend. This was, I think, at the end of the week, Fox and Friends. Julian Assange had multiple interviews with Fox News, and they asked him, what was the most damaging email? And here's what he had to say. A major failure by the uh, Trump campaign and the Bernie Sanders campaign, Hillary Clinton tried to run uh, on her ha having judgment and experience in the State Department. She was the leading architect, uh, the leading political force driving uh, to destroy uh, the Libyan state. Mm -hmm. Generals in the Pentagon, not all of them, but a number, uh, were pushing strongly that the Libyan state should not be destroyed because uh, radical jihadi groups would move in and take it over, which they did. Now, of course, Assange told them that the most damaging information was yet to come. But I thought it was interesting that he didn't focus on the memos that showed pay for play, the patterns that had come out that had been released by uh, Reuters when they had to sue to get this information, to look at her schedule, to correlate that. But he focused on what he called the TikTok menu. And what this does, as he pointed out in that clip, he said, this is something that has been sitting here, not used by Sanders, not used by the Trump campaign. She was working to put herself out there as the driving force behind Libya. And of course, this is before Libya blew up in everybody's faces, before Libya became a, set the Middle East on fire in Benghazi with arming ISIS with the Syrian civil war. And this is what the TikTok menu says. This is an article from DC Whispers. They say the TikTok email outlines how Hillary Clinton did the bidding of her Saudi masters and turned Libya into an ISIS hellhole. Well, we all know that it is an ISIS hellhole, and we do know that she does the bidding of her Saudi masters, but they're just part of a larger coalition of donors. It would also include the bankers who wanted to shut down Gaddafi because he was setting up a gold-backed currency to compete with the Western central bankers. But let's take a look at what they actually did with the memo, okay? If you look at this memo, this is from Jake Sullivan, and it goes to Cheryl Mills, close con uh, confidant of Hillary Clinton, and Victoria Nuland, the person who revived the Cold War for us in the Ukraine. And it says, this is basically off the top of my head with a few consultations on my notes, but it shows that State Department leadership, ownership, stewardship of this country's Libya policy from start to finish. That's the key thing. Hillary Clinton needs to own the Libyan foreign policy. She wanted to five years ago, but she doesn't want to now. She wants to put some different a distance there and say, what difference does it make? They own it from start to finish, she said. Let me know what you think. Victoria, who else might be able to add to this list? And he puts Secretary Clinton's leadership on Libya. And the key paragraph right there, HRC has been a critical voice on Libya and administration deliberations at NATO and in contact group meetings, as well as the public face of the U.S. effort in Libya. She was instrumental in securing the authorization, building the coalition, tightening the noose around Gaddafi and his regime. In other words, as she cackled, we came, we saw, he died. She put this together. And they go through a very long list, a chronology of the various things that she did, meeting with her donors, meeting with foreign governments, and as I pointed out, meeting with the French and telling them, look, you want to re keep your neo-colonialist uh, influence that you've got going here in Libya? We can help you do that. We've got to take out Gaddafi because he's going to become 
a leading person in this area. And of course, these emails that were released showing what was going on, we knew that was happening back in 2011. We reported on it. New American reported on it. Many outlets reported on the fact that we all knew that Gaddafi was making no secret of setting up a gold-backed currency to go into competition with the fiat currencies of the central banks, with the petrodollar that we created, with, again, with the Saudis. And yet we see in their deliberations that was a key factor. We saw that back in January of this year. Actually, it was on New Year's Eve when they liked to release information. The State Department released and declassified 3,000 emails back on New Year's Eve 2015, just like we saw this information coming out on July 4th. They picked the holidays where nobody is watching to uh, put that in. But of course, it's not a conspiracy any more than the fact that the federal government is going to try to run our elections. Now, what will happen after Hillary Clinton becomes president. Well, you know, the first thing that she wants to do, if it happens, unfortunately, is to take away our guns. And a key part of that, I think, is creating a public opinion perception, and Hollywood is a key part of that. Hollywood is a key part of trying to get Hillary Clinton elected. And we see that one of the key people in Hollywood working with her to get her elected, Harvey Weinstein, has now said that he is going to do a reimagining uh, of course, they say it's going to be factual, a reimagining of the Waco siege and the murders there. A very fitting thing to do, because it was Hillary Clinton herself that gave that order. They gave that order to Janet Reno, who told people, give me a reason that we don't uh, do this. Uh, we know from uh, documents that came out that it was actually between Vince Foster and Webb Hubble uh, that Vince Foster and Hillary Clinton were pushing very hard to end this siege with Webb Hubble, also with Janet Reno. But we now have Hollywood stepping into the breach, and this is someone, Harvey Weinstein, who has made no secret of the fact that he wants to end the Second Amendment. He hates the fact that anyone other than the government has guns. Uh, they're they've already picked the people to uh, play David Koresh. As a Hollywood reporter describes it, they say this event series will explore the truth, I bet, uh, behind this tragedy and speak, and this is key, speak directly to the heart of the current issues between citizens law enforcement, and the media. Understand that when they talk about current issues, they're going to use this to push for more gun control. And this is something that he's done in the past. Going back to 2014, January 2014, a U.S. News and World Report said Hollywood takes aim at gun rights. Who is at the center of that? Again, Harvey Weinstein. He said at that time, two years ago, that his next film would be to take down the National Rifle Association. That film, which looks like, according to Inter Internet Movie Database, it looks like that's not going to go into production. They say it was going to be called The Senator's Wife, and it would expose the NRA, they said, for their behind-the-scenes machinations, okay? Well, what about the behind-the-scenes uh, plotting of Hillary Clinton? We're not going to expose that, right? Hollywood is uh, not going to do a series on <laughs> Hillary's uh, dark emails. They say, according to the blog that they had at the time, the film would star Oscar winner Meryl Streep and others who are A-listers. It would be a behind-the-scenes account how the NRA used its influence of politicians to defeat the bill. And they point out Weinstein has filmed such films as Django Unchanged, Grindhouse, Kill Bill 1, Kill Bill 2, and Pulp Fiction. They say the man knows his violence. Now, Fast forward to last year, September last year. A new pro-gun control film has gotten the green light and a distribution deal. This film, Miss Sloan, sounds remarkably similar. Hollywood doesn't have too many original ideas, do they? They want to get somebody who is going to be fighting the NRA. And now they, this film actually is going to come to production, uh, possibly not before the election. It's titled Miss Sloan. It was purchased at the Toronto Film International Film Festival. It's about an ambitious lobbyist whose career is focused on bringing about stronger gun control legislation, and it will star Jessica, Jessica Chastain, and it is going to happen. They say in 2014, uh, Harvey Weinstein had uh, planned on doing something very similar to that with Meryl Streep, but that looks like that's not going to go through. So who is Harvey Weinstein? He has run multiple fundraisers for Hillary Clinton, of course. And in the most recent one that just happened uh, back in uh, June, they said there was a strict no social media policy at the star-studded fundraiser hosted by Harvey Weinstein. They said the sold-out event uh, for only 50 people was $33,000 ahead. They said no tweeting, no photos, no anything, but people took pictures of the 
big name stars as they were going on the outside, okay? And of course, this was co-hosted by A-listers like Leonardo DiCaprio. It also had Jennifer Lopez, Sarah Jessica Parker, Matthew Broderick, and others at the event. This is what we've seen even more recently in the Northeast, Martha's Vineyard, where she had a $100,000 plate dinner with the Rothschilds, going from hedge fund managers to the Rothschilds to Hollywood, and no tweeting allowed. Now, when we come back, Joe Biggs is going to join me. We're going to talk about Trump's visit to Mexico today, as well as what Hillary said to veterans, trying to get them to leave Donald Trump, where he has a huge uh, margin with veterans over Hillary Clinton. Also, I'll have more information about election fraud and rigging from Owen Schroer and Margaret Howell, and I'll have my interview with Gary Haven. He was an eyewitness to the Haitian relief efforts, and he said the Clinton Foundation was nowhere to be seen. We'll be right back. This is the answer for your children to totally absorb the multivitamins, the minerals, the amino acids, everything at once. Unveil Vitamin Mineral Fusion Advanced Multivitamin Formula, 30 servings, fruit punch flavored dietary supplement. It is simply amazing, InfoWarsLife.com. There's a million different products like this out there that they're, you know, they're good in different ways. But this takes all of the vitamins, all of the essential amino acids, all of the essential compounds and minerals that you need, puts it into something oh. that's great tasting as mm. opposed to like clumpy, gross stuff. And you can put it in your drink every morning. I put it in my protein shake. It is the platinum standard, in my view, of multivitamins in terms of an advanced multi-drink vitamin. The cleanest, the purest, new stuff had to be invented. That's why it took this long to even bring us something this good. Some companies are going to take a small amount of vitamins and make it, you know, so there's so much filler, it looks like there's a lot. This is ultra concentrated. We're not playing games here. Okay, this Well, that's my philosophy. That's your philosophy. Yeah. This I want to, but again, there's some great stuff out there. Yeah. And there's other, you know. No, of course. Definitely. There's other powders I promote at InfoWarsHealth.com. Yeah, They're excellent. I mean, there's some good stuff out there. This is just the very best we can bring you. And when you buy it, you support InfoWars. You support the reporters. You support yourself. Tell folks about some of these uh, other things that are in this uh, and why this is just this total complete package uh, for your body. Because, uh, again, we didn't put the synthetic amino acids. We didn't put the synthetic vitamins. We, didn't, we put the plant-based, high-quality, clean, natural uh, ingredients into this. Yeah, exactly. So you've got your standard vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin E, the list goes on. A huge amount of vitamin C, by the way. Tell folks yeah, about that. A, a thousand plus percent of your daily value, which is what you need. Because the, you know, FDA guidelines, we all know about those. Zinc, magnesium, selenium, L-glutamine. Each one of these you could go on for about 10 minutes about the benefits of these things. Alpha lipoic acid, folic acid, calcium, and the list goes on. 34 other ones you can check out. Go to InfoWarsLife.com, the label's up there. You've got the entire ingredients list that you can neurotically examine for yourself. And just... By the way, look on the other side, too, because uh, we're showing people the... Uh Minerals and things. Let's look at the vitamins right there. Old Scott in there. I mean, it's amazing. It's top left. Again, if you're radio listeners, infowars.com forward slash show. Vitamin A has 4,333% uh, from beta carotene. And what's that other source? I just know this all the best sources. Retinol. So you've also got your vitamin D at 1,000 IU, which is a large dose, actually. And you know what? Some people could say, well, isn't this competing with your other products? Well, yeah, you know what? We could be like some people and just take all the stuff that we sell also at InfoWarsLife.com and not put any of it, but then it wouldn't be a balanced formula, and we're not going to do that. And it might actually hurt us in the long run to put all the best stuff in here, but that's just the way we got to do it because we can't start thinking like that. So get them today, InfoWarsLife.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139.